and it gives you that sharpness. And when you're playing certain backbeats, like James Brown, for example, when you feel good, you're going. It has more edge to it, and it, it cuts. It gives you a stronger backbeat, gives the band a better pocket. Mm -hmm. The whole groove yeah. has a lot more going on that feels good. People that like to dance, they're going to feel that backbeat, and that keeps everything chug-a-lugging. Yeah. yeah. I, knew, I had a friend of mine, he used to play every beat was a rim shot. And uh, he went bankrupt, man, buying drumsticks. <laughs> He'd wear out his sticks. <laughs> wearing out sticks. Uh, well, I've had sticks that wear out where I crack against the, the, right. the steel rim. And eventually, I wear them out. I don't break many sticks, mm -hmm. but I think that's because I had good instructors that taught me how to hit a drum without right. hurting it, exactly. the head, or the stick. Mm -hmm. But you can wear out drumsticks doing that, but the rim shot does give you that crack. Right, right, That right. Uh, adds a lot of niceness to the backbeat, especially on funk. Mm -hmm. R&B, rock and roll. Right. Now, there's another set of uh, strikers, I, I should call them right now, um, oh. called a set of brushes. Uh, we've been uh, doing all the playing with the sticks. Uh, could you uh, pull yeah. out the brushes and maybe uh, just talk about them for a minute? Well, these are pretty cool. It's just, well, maybe not a coincidence. These are also the Vic Firth brand. He's a percussionist from up in Boston. I'm not sure if he's in the symphony or the Boston Pops, but he's just about perfected sticks and drum instruments that play the drum. But a lot of folks don't know brushes anymore. I don't know if uh, it's because they don't get exposed to them, but brushes are great for light music. And truthfully, you could, you could play some pretty good stuff on brushes, but they're soft and gentle, so if you're doing even like a... They can, they can explode, too. You can play kind of a samba, like. Yeah. So they go from delicate, delicate to triple forte. Mm -hmm. um, I guess when I was growing up, my teachers knew how to do this and they taught me this, and it was part of my lessons. But there was a lot of jobs that I played that were real quiet jazz trios, where if you didn't keep it down low, they'd throw you out. Yeah. So yeah. these brushes have made me a bunch of money. Right, exactly. As a there, drummer. There was a guy, uh, he was known to tell his drummers, he said, the day I hear you, you're fired. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so <laughs> also, as long as I don't hear you, you got a job. You know? Also, so. <laughs> with these things, you can do nice things, like if you want a little, almost sounds like a bell tree, or. Mm -hmm. And also, for gongs. Oh, yeah. So you can do little tricks with both ends of these and the handles, because they got that soft sound, almost like a soft mallet. Mm -hmm. OK. Now, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, this interesting uh, configuration here, the hi-hat. Oh, we like hi-hats. Yeah. Um, could you demonstrate a little, little hi-hat plan for us? Yeah. the most. Known hi-hat sound is your basic jazz beat. Or, back to Donna Summers, disco. A famous Pittsburgher, we're certainly an admiration of. Uh, the late Max Roach was one of the world's great hi-hat soloists. Mm -hmm. He used to have some stuff he would do on hi-hat yeah. that I've seen in movies and on tape. Mm -hmm. But he could play the hi-hat solo and go on for stretches of time, and he would get so many different sounds because uh, you can tighten it up and it raises, loosen it up. You can practically play a song melodically on a hi-hat, particularly mm -hmm. uh, a virtuoso such as I was, you know, right. relating to. But uh, hi-hat's an extraordinary thing. Plus, it's the backbeat, when, which the backbeat is where the rim shot is. But it's the backbeat, and this chick sound is what people think of when they think of the hi-hat. So, so, so when, you're, when you're playing a rhythm and maybe you're, on, you're riding on your ride, do you, do you keep, the, keep time with your, with your, with your, with your hi-hat sometimes? Sometimes As I do, and, and sometimes I'm playing like on a salsa, it's on the upbeat. Or it can be. Or the backbeat.
So it does whatever it needs to do based on the type of rhythm you're playing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move down here to the bass drum here. Bass drum? Yeah, a little, little, uh, this thing little is bass the drum heart, for playing technique here. It's the heartbeat of a drum set. It's the most important drum. It doesn't necessarily play the most notes, but this is literally the heartbeat. Not like a human heart, but it's the beat. It's like, there's a song that was by Huey Lewis in the news called The Heart of Rock and Roll, mm -hmm. and it's It's the heartbeat. It's the foundation that everything else works around in a rhythm section. Mm -hmm. And often it should complement and coordinate with your bass player rhythmically, or at least the accents should connect to your bassist. Because typically, and we know, I know you're also a fine drummer, that drummers and bass players tend to just connect, listen in, and almost their minds, bodies, and spirits become the same when they are listening and working together like that. Right, right, right. Now let's talk about some time signatures. Oh boy. Okay, I know you were talking about the <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar <laughs> yeah. that, you're, the, the, that you're performing right now. Yes. And how the different time signatures during the, the performance. Uh, could you demonstrate maybe like a 5-4? Sure. but it's a one, two, three, four, five, and people mm -hmm. tend not to dance or tap their toes in irregular meters that don't end with even numbers. Mm -hmm. So the odds are a little trickier. Right, right. Okay, what about like a three, seven? Three, seven, let's see. How about a seven, four, maybe? Seven, four. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> the brew back one is I'll do. Famous thing there is uh, Dave Brubeck. The da 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 uh, a lot of practice and instruction by us guys in this country because we don't think seven. Right, right. Now you demonstrated the disco beat, correct? Yes. Okay. So c what about the marching beat? Um, marching? Can I join you on a marching oh, beat? Oh yeah, that's where we both got <laughs> our, our youthful enthusiasm that uh, never waned for drums, but... I'll follow your lead. All right. Typical march. Ready? That was sure fun. Was. Drummers and like it. We drummers like it, and we'll be right back. For those just joining us, we're uh, talking to a uh, jazz drummer, salsa drummer, all-around drummer, percussionist, Mr. Bob Breen. 
Uh, Bob, I know, when we, uh, like we said at the beginning of the show, you played with some of the biggest names in the business. Uh, could you tell us uh, who some of those were? Yeah, and humbly, I've had the honor and privilege of working with Sam and Dave and oh. Soul Man. Yeah. Uh, knock on wood. Uh, they were, unfortunately, a week after that show, Sam Pratter passed away. He mm -hmm. was the Sam. Uh, and that was a job booked through Walt Maddox, who's our mutual friend, who runs Pittsburgh's Marcells. Uh, naturally, I played for the Marcells, still do. I just love the Marcells. Yeah. And they did the. Uh, Blue Moon, ball, 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 ball. And yeah. when I was a child, I used to try to sing along with record. Freddie Johnson, yeah, <laughs> the original bass singer. And they're, they're great guys. And ironically, one of the current Marcells and I played in the same band when we were teenagers. We used to work a lot of the, we called it the Chitlin Circuit down mm -hmm. the Mon Valley. We played the clubs. We had a booking agent who I hear is still around, a guy named Dickie Wells, booked all the, mm -hmm. the clubs. And a guy named Johnny Smooth was our sax player. He's had a lot of successful bands in Pittsburgh. Uh, worked with the Platters in a show with the Marcells because we used to be the pit group basically for everybody. Platters had who knows how many hits and they were awesome. Worked with little Anthony who is oh, awesome, yeah. who is not little. He, yeah. he was little when he started out. He's fabulous. Like right. going out of my head was one of his big hits. Yeah. Uh, he was fabulous to work with. And you and I both know uh, Charlie Thomas from the Drifters. Mm -hmm. uh, the Drifters had so many hits I grew up on, and you probably grew up on. I just love the Drifters, and, and I play for them. Right. It's, 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 it's fabulous. They're nice guys. They're wonderful to work with. And, like, I'm playing with icons of the music of our day. It's mm -hmm. fabulous. Um, gosh, with uh, a lot of other groups, let's see. Well, there was a, there was a, a, a little girl that we worked with for, like, five years, oh, yeah, man, yeah. It turned into this great big yeah, superstar. Yeah. What did you talk about that? <laughs> yeah, Christina Aguilera. <laughs> yeah. Her, yeah. Yeah. She was a little girl. We were doing shows with mm -hmm. her, and she had this voice when she was 12 and 13 years old. Obviously, highly talented young person who now is a mega star. Yeah. I'm sure she doesn't remember those days with us. Well, like you know we what? I, I used to tell her all the time. I used to say, now, when you get to be famous, I mm. want to be your drummer. And she yeah. would say, Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, I can't yeah. even find her now, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've done shows with the Marvelettes. They're real good. Uh, there's a group called the Moon Glows. Had a lot of real sweet, nice tunes. Mm -hmm. Played their shows. A girl group called the Jewels. Uh, this is basically mostly stuff that Walt's contacts put us on these shows with the producers he knew. Right, Walt right, Maddox, right. who was our colleague and good friend. Yeah. Now, a lot of those shows with, 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 uh, with those groups were more likely in a concert situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At concert halls and arenas <laughs> yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Now, do you play any differently, say, if you're at maybe like the Mellon Arena or if you're at, at a club? Does yes. your playing style differ depending on what venue you're playing at? Absolutely. That's a good question because at a concert, everybody's sitting down. You don't have to worry about them dancing. And you're, you're putting it all out there in an hour and a half to two hours. So you can totally play with maximum energy and survive to finish the job. When you're doing a four-hour job in a club, People want to dance. They want to talk. They got to interact. They got to be able to order food and beverages. So you can't be as loud, and you can't have the high impact. And if you want repeat work, you're going to deliver what works in the venue, which means you're going to play more softly. Probably use those brushes that we took out earlier. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, instead of the hard backbeat, you're going to play for your backbeat so that folks don't get knocked out of their conversation. A guy might be asking his girlfriend to get married and he don't want to hear a cymbal crash and a backbeat with a rim shot. Right. Uh, things happen in that venue that are so different that, yes, you play remarkably different. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a preference um, yeah. as far as uh, would you pre prefer to play at a concert with, uh, say, 17,000 or a nice little intimate club with maybe about uh, 25, 30 people? I like the big venues. It you just like feels a lot more exciting. It's yeah. uh, closer to the Super Bowl. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, so I, I like a big concert better. Like it's a lot play. more fun, and, and usually you go there when there's those big shows. The vendor has the sound system. The vendor often has the drum set. You show up with your stick bag. Mm -hmm. You get catered meals in the back room. Right. They treat you good. You got water bottles around, so if you're thirsty, they everything's cared for. It, it, you feel good. They treat you mm -hmm. like, albeit side men aren't stars, you get star treatment because their stars really are out there on, in front of you. Right, right, yeah. right. So I like that better. That's good. But That's I like good. the small venue, too, because you get closer to people.